Hello guys, Susanna here. Well, I can't believe we're up to block five already. Um, this one is more about accessories than a technique. Um, you know, I just wanted to, it's vintage sewing, so I wanted to use bits and pieces, um, you know, vintage bits and pieces that we've got, like I showed you in the last one. I should probably show you all of them this time around. Um, buckles, all sorts of different types of buckles. This is really pretty. So, I've got a few. There we go. I might have oh, these little accessories, like a little, an old button. So, you know, get, go to your thrift shops or um, you can get them, you know, like you can buy belts from the, the um, op shops and thrift shops. So, so get yourself, um, gather up your bits and pieces. So you've got buckles, you've got rickrack old vintage rickrack that you need one thing I didn't put in there which I may even grab out and use grab a um, grab a vintage AO I got all these vintage AOs I think I will put one in there I'm just going to have to see what goes with my the colours I want to get a pretty pretty one so just sort of, this is a vintage accessories pack. Um, okay, where are we? That one might work. We'll see. Either that one, I'll put a couple aside, or maybe that one. Ooh, that one's pretty. That one's similar to the other one. So, and even some vintage labels, laundry labels. So there you go. Um, when you have these, you usually need a couple. So I might put in a couple. The pink is the way to go, but it's probably a bit big. soft pink one. Oh, here we go. Oh, that one. Here we go. So, well, I'll just put them aside. Chuck them in so you get sidetracked. But you can get the vintage um, yo-yos. Melanie from Purveyor of Reclaimed Textiles on Instagram. She has got, um, she has, gets plenty of vintage yo-yos. Um, we need, like, vintage buttons. Um, all your old stuff and even um, I know you can get old threads but if you can get them like this like a little bit flatter than what you know rather than on a spool so this has been made flat um, the guys that have got the kits have got all this stuff including buttons and everything and we also need some a bit of oh, um, some wadding, no, an old quilt. Okay, so well, I'll just quickly show you through this one. The first video that I do, I will show you. I just love this book, Christine Book Designs. Um, I bought this years ago. I think it's um, not sure, nineties maybe, uh, two thousand and one. There you go. Um, and she has lovely um, sort of 1930s designs and stuff that she has used and they are just so pretty. I'm just going to take you through the pictures, the pages with the pictures. It's an old, an old quilt but I mainly wanted to show you, um, this is stuff that she's made, this page you know all the old accessories and bobbins and accessories and um, yeah, it just looks really, really pretty, the stuff that she's got in there. And it's on the back. It's not a very big book. It's an old book, so, you know, if you're going to try and get it. Christmas stuff. It is very nice. But I just like the uh, 
stitch vintage so I've been into it for for a while I love vintage stuff um, well, here's an example of something that I made some of you guys are probably this is using vintage this is my mum's old jewelry um, this is my mum when she was young and then you know like a vintage ephemera like old buttons and um, lace doily so get out all your old vintage accessories and um, and buttons and all that kind of bits and pieces so it's sort of going to be a bit like a collage my mum was so cute and I love this book most of you probably would have this book this is Tilly Rose's first book um, I've dog a few pages more for the accessories like her vintage buttons and and even stuff like that it's an old um, vintage ephemera if you want to add some of that in there um, this book has actually got a lot of she loves using vintage stuff here here she's got I hope it's just not too glary see she's used one of those vintage um, threads so um, a um, a buckle vintage buttons I mean, you know I've sort of dog eat some of the pages um, yeah, here bits and pieces, doilies, old quilts, keys, so I'll just take this out, old measuring tapes, all bits and pieces here, I just love it, um, pins, needles, beautiful doilies and vintage fabrics, Got one of these somewhere up there. Yeah, yep. Yeah. An old, an old, an old cup with um really pretty ephemera and isn't it gorgeous? Love it. I've got a video on that. And you can also make them out of. Look at this. This little silver pot. Isn't it cute? Got a video on that one as well. Okay. And what else we got? beautiful old laces and ribbons and buttons and just found you know even scrapple bits but mainly you know like um, vintage linen thread um, most of the old threads you get on the spools but you get them on those flat things every now and again okay and then I think I've got this one here's uh, yesterday's memories she created this I really like that idea so she used old threads and that's a knitting needle and old buttons and um, an old spoon so this is sort of the type of thing that I want sort of like a vintage collage um, you know owed to vintage accessories um, block so let's put these away and I'll grab these out now this is the guys that get the kit they get a buckle and um, one of these this was like a fan of um, cards and I think they might have been 12 or 15 and I ended up getting more um, broke it apart and they got one of those each so there's in the blues and in the pinks so get yourself a beautiful um, background I love this fabric I have got fabric packs with that in there in that uh, pink and teal it is beautiful so what I've sort of pre-done I've gotten um, hopefully we're in camera I guess look oh, yep we are like that for now so I've gotten this and I think did I cut it off here I might have cut it off here so what I did you some of you get bigger bigger pieces whatever pieces that you get in there and we're sort of going to do a faux needle case. I mean, I've I've used my um, pinking shears, but I'm still going to go around it, like with a running stitch. Um, I've included in the packs. These are actually um, vintage needles, and they I made sure that they're tapestry needles. I just got three vintage tapestry needles. They're quite old. So um, we've all got needles, but I suggest you getting the tapestry needles because they've got a blunt end. Um, you can put it in like that, 
but I think it's going to be a little bit bulky so I may because remember this is going to be a, a faux needle case so I might cut that I think I might go around make it look pretty okay not that it makes any difference because it's not going to fray and this way it will sit a little flatter the only thing I didn't do on the month of May which is when this is so when you see this video I'll be on my textile tour in France which will be lovely so I've had to do um, these videos in advance okay put that like that so I've just done a bit of layout this is a some rickrack and I'm going to put maybe some more um, more rickrack on here like that and sew that on just to make it look pretty and then I'm going to sew that hand sew that down with just a, a you know like a rough satin stitch and I may just um, stitch that down as well. I might put it near the edge so it does look like a, a um, like a little needle book. So it's a needle book but it's a bit different. And then I've got a button that I'm going to put there and we are going to do um, a big bullion stitch to wrap around there. Or I might even... I think a bullion stitch would be better so that we can open and close our little needle case um, I just wrote word needles on there which we will embroider this is a, a half of a vintage collar I may I was going to fold that down this is my big massive scissors that I got from my friend for Christmas um, too big I was gonna I might you could probably fold it down but I may cut this piece because there is a bit of a line um, and we're just gonna put it in the corner and make it look like a shirt or a collar over um, over a shirt so um, a lot of you may not find these and I don't want you, I was just lucky enough to find these in an antique shop and I cut them in half and you know people in the kits. I do have some of these left if you are really wanting to get one. So I'm just going to put that there like that. So um, and then make it look a bit like a, um, you know, like she's wearing a top. Okay. And then I put the rickrack down there like that. And then a button. Which is really pretty. Okay. Now, this is, um, I've just had leftover bits of fabric. So measure, measure the width of your um, buckle. I'm just going to put that in the corner, I quite like that. And I just ironed it over and I'm just going to put it in that one. Cut this. I just love this fabric. Now, one thing I did forget was the vintage yo yo's. So, um, where are we? just got the buttons I've got these little bits and pieces of the guys in the kit get this and this oh, it's very windy out there um, in the oh, which one the ribbon embroidery I would just put these in there so if you want to use these I just thought that was really cute they're not vintage but I, I really like them and I was going to either use that 
for this one so because there's a bit of a hole there I may end up using that I think that sort of suits it a little bit better um, I don't know we'll see how we go because I wanted I haven't got any you know those old um, sewing the old ones like the actual because they're made out of fabric so Is the um, it matches the white? Let me put that over there. So we're just going to be fiddling around and seeing how we want our piece to go. No, I think that's too much blue. It's got that ready colour on there. Okay, got our bits and pieces. And then BP. I like that one, just Elvis Presley. <laughs> Probably put that in there, I reckon. There we go. So now I've got to remember where everything is. So what I might do is now I cannot remember where I put my um, my bits and pieces like I've got I've got these and I've not got extra spares but I can't for the life of me remember where I put it so I'll have a look at this thing no they're here somewhere um, because of my um, you know move it changing over um, my room all bits and pieces oh here's that gorgeous gorgeous pack I got for Christmas so pretty probably use some of that on um, on my the garden okay now I am sort of dawdling and going all over the place so this is the first one. Oh, that does look pretty really pretty in the camera there so I'm going to get Over the side. I'll grab that. Put this over to the side and I'm gonna embroider the needles. I was thinking I really do like this colour, but it might be a bit too a bit too dark, but I think that might be alright to actually embroider the word needles go with this yeah it does so okay okay so um get yourself a faux This is the first part that we're going to do. I'm not sure, I don't know if you can still see that in camera, whether I'm going to do some embroidery on this or not, but I, I, I don't think I will, because I'm doing so much. We'll see how we go. And um, like the other ones, um, there's usually words and everything in there, like, but the word vintage accessories is probably going to be, so I might even do, um, you know, vintage sewing, or I don't know. Um, but we've already got vintage sewing on the front cover so we'll see see how we go I think it might be alright at least got the word needles on there 
So, um, what I might do with this. because you're going to see the other side is give it a yank Ugh. but not too hard you don't want it to come all the way through you just want it to be sandwiched in the middle it doesn't always work give it a bit of a yank Ugh. I think I might need to make it a bit bigger because it doesn't seem to want to stay in there how you hide some of your stitching okay lift it up oh seriously <laughs> normally it's not this difficult um, to do you sort of want to push it in I'm gonna push it in it really isn't normally this hard people there we go you want to have it staying in between so and when we do stitching we're not going to go all the way through we're just going to grab it so you don't see it coming all the way through it's on sandwiched in between like what Anne Brooks said when we were doing something this is my this sort of a bit of a breather one it's more of a, a vintage collage that's actually probably what we could call it because collage isn't a massive word you might be able to call it vintage collage but um it will be vintage accessories on the page okay now I'm going to go back up here so we're going in between you can feel it because it's quite a thick yeah I think I really like that color it has been really nice seeing some people's process so far of what they're doing so. there we go I just put this on with um, a friction pen that way you know any extra that you may still see when you give it an iron you won't see it so we're just going to do a backing stitch with this and it really doesn't take that long um, I didn't have a like, like with some of the other all the other PDFs I didn't have a PDF with this because um, it was fairly organic something that you can use your bits and pieces I'll give you a guide on how you can do it but um, you can do it exactly the same as mine or you can arrange your pieces in the way that you want because you're not going to have the same pieces so but um, I thought I'd just show you how to, I did, made this because this is like a, a faux um, you know a false needle case I wanted to make it as flat as I possibly could because we are putting it in a journal or having it on a quilt um, you don't want it to stick out too much it still hasn't come through so. 
um, if you don't have an old quilt, which when we did Roxy's Journal of Stitchery, a lot of people didn't have, you go to the thrift shop and get yourself a quilted um, pillowcase or something like that. You know, there's there is stuff that you can, and if you know, it's not hard to make yourself. Just get a very nice. This is only one color. Get some wadding, put it on a really pretty piece of fabric on the front and back maybe stitch it down and you've got yourself a, a padded um, little quilt you don't have to you know make, make yourself and if you want it to be vintage use vintage fabrics so okay so here we are going with this well I may oh look I'll just pause finish that off and then I'll be back okay I'm back again I'm just going to zoom in so I showed you how to do the technique of going in here's a technique of going out now what you do is you just do a knot because you come when on the very last stitch you go all the way through to the back and then you go through the same hole and there you go so you've got no stitching on the back which is what you want but yet it's nice and secure so what we're going to do is hopefully go up a little bit we will still be in camera I might move off all those bits and pieces just work on what we need okay um, put a pin in and across okay we're gonna grab that and I'm going to just do a very quick running stitch all the way around just to hold that down and because it is um, felt it is not going anywhere so that is going to hold this baby down so this is how you do your sewing needle case that's the first thing that we're going to be learning Probably should have taken the needles out, but I can't be bothered. Okay. Now we've got it sort of more in because we are going to need to have a bit of room to put the top part. I mean, if you wanted to, this is a nice way you can make. A very small needle case if you get something twice the size and then rather than cutting that bit off you open it up go on the machine sew in the middle and you've got yourself a very cute little needle case but for these purposes this is why it may be nice using as a quilt because this piece here it would even be nice as a standalone like if you made a couple a really nice standalone piece to hang up in your craft room if you're a, if you're into slow stitching and stitching which if you're doing this series you probably are okay now doesn't have to be perfect just have to be held down that's it probably a 
들어 뒤에 들어 뒤진 살바이즈 분진을 is going to go into your book or if you're a quilt if you're on a quilt it'll go onto the back and you don't see it because you'll have the wadding in between okay now I keep calling it wadding rather than batting my um, friends at my craft group just keep saying it's not wadding it's batting okay now what I'm going to do with this is I think I may know where I've got my bits and pieces. It's they may be in here. I really need somewhere. I'm trying to find my um I'm hoping this is a full one. Nope, that's what I need. It. That's what I need. Eh? Yeah. It's got to be here somewhere. Okay, sorry guys. Underneath all this rubbish, there might be. Look at this. Look at these beautiful. Look at this old vintage sewing machine. Isn't that cute? Um, that could be something you could put on there. No. I mean, it probably is in there, but oh, it's annoying when you can't find stuff. Oh, well, we'll just have to do it the old fashioned way and pin it. I just like using this stuff because I don't like having to pin. So I'm going to grab, oh, that's the bit that we are using on the end. Here we go. to go around the corner with Rick Crack can sometimes be a little tricky. I might do that. There we go. Okay. So this way is actually holding just a way of zhuzhing it up a bit you can put some lace I'm just choosing to use Rick Rack because it's a vintage vintage accessory okay and another I don't want to have really big pins she says when she's got that one okay now we've got this and once again, I don't really want to see, I might even go in between, see? You don't see it. We're going to hold this down. down um, properly okay here we go usually you get into a ribbon of these things okay We'll hold it down 
if you do have the fabric glue it might pay to use that because it won't move as much This is why I like to have it held down with this. Hopefully there's enough in there that it'll hold it down. There we go. Just hold it down out of the way for a sec. Okay. Then it's gonna go here. babies okay there we go now go in there and across the idea I'll be back when it's sewn onto the corner it's ready 38 minutes okay I am back um, okay I'm going to just put that on there like that um, it has, has been held down if you really feel a bit worried about it not being held down to enough it's being held down with the machine there you can always do a little bit of hand stitching so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that little thing here as a guide and then pin that in there and um, I will proceed to do um, what I'm going to do and you can probably do this as homework with this, this colour is I'm just going to get some of the thread and I'm going to do a very close satin stitch. I'll quickly show you and it's going to go all the way through all the layers. Okay, put this away. Hopefully between now and the next video I'll uh, a fair bit because it does use a bit because you're going around and around. Um, okay, and then next week I'll show you how to do the bullion knot closure. Doesn't really matter if you know how to do a bullion knot closure, you go for it and do it because we're going to put this button here and then 
do a bullion knot closure from there. But for here, we're going to do, so just grab the piece from here. And we are just going to catch it, go down and up. This is the, the bit that's going to be a little bit tricky to be with. And it doesn't need to be really close together, it's just going to catch it. If you want to, you could probably do a blanket stitch if you are more comfortable with that. Um, I'm just going to catch it, I might even go back so you go like that all the way along and then that will be like a little booklet that you can open and close cute okay guys well i will catch you in part two and we're going to be doing a few more little bits and pieces i really like how that looks okay there we go and um we'll probably do a few more bits and pieces finish this off okay well i'll catch you in the next video thanks for watching this is a really cute cute one and you can go oh, go to town and make it your own thanks for watching bye